you want to know how to make better use of Apple's color picker, then this video is for you. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Now, I did a series of videos recently, or I'm actually in the middle of making a series of videos all about the uh, the green screen uh, screen sharing in Ecamm Live. Uh, and I sort of mentioned in one of those that, oh, here is the hex code and the RGB code uh, for some specific color. And then uh, it was brought to my attention <laughs> that I didn't actually explain how you even enter these into uh, into the Apple color picker or how you actually get an actual color out from these codes. So uh, that's what this video is all about. It's how to basically use uh, Apple's built-in color picker uh, and the color palette uh, and uh, what you can do with it because I think most people just use the uh, the basic uh, uh, view that you have of it and in fact let me just bring that up. So if you are using Apple you may be familiar with uh, this thing. <laughs> this is the, uh, the, the color palette or the color picker and you can obviously, whoops a daisy, <laughs> I'm clicking on my uh, Ecamm screen rather than the, the click the palette itself. So most people know that you can click around here to select the color and you can see that we've got the, the color that's been chosen is uh, appearing down here in this little box down at the bottom. Uh, you can also then lighten or darken the color as well. So you can uh, shade it like that. Uh, to change the, uh, the, uh, the 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 brightness or the lightness of it. Uh, I'm using the wrong terminology there, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you can make it lighter or darker. Um, you can also change the opacity of it as well. Uh, and you can either use this slider to slide it up or, or down, uh, or you can actually change it and put in a specific value. So if you are doing something repetitive and you want to make sure you've got the value right, you can do it in there. Once you have got a color, then you can actually just click on it here. Uh, and first of all, you notice that as I hover over it, it is actually telling me the uh, the code of it. Uh, but then also I'm going to drag it into here and you can just drag these into here. And you can think of this as kind of like a global palette that then you'll have access to uh, anywhere, basically. So just colors that you might use often or whatever. Uh, and then this because this uh, this uh, color fill, I think is the technical <laughs> term for it, the color fill palette, the color palette, the color wheel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a sort of um, uh, universal thing in the Apple system. So whenever you open other applications, uh, then you will still have these colors here. But this is only really a sort of basic look at it. Now, by the way, one more thing that I should just mention <laughs> in case it wasn't, uh, in case you weren't aware of it, is uh, I've just opened up this. So this is now on another part of my screen. So this one that I've got over on that side, <laughs> this side, this is just on another part of my screen and it's just an image basically. And what I'm using this for is just to illustrate the point that if I come back over onto the other side, oh, which way do I point? I always get this wrong. <laughs> it's always the opposite way, the, the way I think it should be. And yet I still just get it wrong every time. This one on this side, <laughs> if you see this little uh, eyedropper thing or little uh, uh, sort of pipette uh, icon here, uh, where is it? Uh, that one. Uh, then if you click on that one, then you can then basically go anywhere on the screen and you'll notice, in fact, it's not quite showing up uh, with my pro mouse working, but basically you get a little magnifying glass and I can just pick any color from here. And as soon as I pick the color, uh, then it will apply that over on the palette on this side. So now you can see that that color I selected has been picked. So if ever you've got an image or something like that and you want to grab a color out of that, then you can uh, just use that little pipette uh, symbol to go and grab that color. So uh, that is how you use this basic version of the, uh, uh, the color palette. But there are, as you can see across the top, these other things here. And uh, this is the one here, this color sliders. Here you've got a few uh, different things that you can do. So we've got red, green and blue. So when in that previous video I gave the RGB code or numbers, you can just add those in here. So you can add whatever you, you want in here uh, and it will just adjust that slider. So when people give you an RGB code, uh, then you just come and put those three figures in here uh, and you can obviously change it manually and just notice how it's changing this color down at the bottom. So this is what we're adjusting. So you can just basically adjust these uh, it's, it's a bit tricky to actually play with these manually. Uh, so the only reason I use these is actually to just come and enter the code itself. But you've also got this other common way that people express color, which is the hex code. And it starts with a hash symbol uh, and so, uh, or pound sign, whichever way you call it. Uh, and so that is where you enter those in. Uh, and this 
is always it's uses hexadecimal so that is uh without getting into <laughs> explaining the ins and outs of hexadecimal it uses a combination of numbers and also the letters uh one uh, a to f as well so um that is where you would enter these uh, these codes in here so you can see that that one's actually got an e in it so anyway it's a, rather than base 10 it's a different uh, base base 16. so um that is uh, that is that and then also if we come up to the top uh, i should just say there is uh, different versions of these sliders as well so as well as the rgb sliders uh, which is the sort of the one that i use most of the time you've also got a few others so cmyk that's another way that people express color uh, and that is if you're working in print a lot then you'll find that it's um uh, rather than stuff on screen then you'll find that that is usually in cmyk uh, and that is cyan magenta yellow and black which is what is used in print and then, uh, and again, you've, uh, it's the percentage of those colors. So there you can see we're, we're working in percentages. Uh, so there's that one. And then there's also HSB, uh, which is hue, saturation and brightness. So you can change those as well. Uh, and then the first one on there was grayscale. So that is how you can change uh, for, to a particular uh, grayscale. And there is keyboard shortcuts for these, which is command one, two, three, and four. So when you are in this palette, you can flip between those as well. Uh, now, the other thing about this is if somebody does give you a, an image or, or you've got something on screen and you think, hey, that's a nice color. I'd like to know what the hex code is for that. Uh, maybe you want to write it down and remember it for later. <laughs> there are people who do that in the world, you know. Uh, I'm telling you because I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, so uh, the way that you do that is basically you're just going to come over here and use your little color picker again. Go back over to the image and you can say, hey, that's a nice color of green. And then you grab that. And then when you come back over to this side, uh, look, we can see what the hex code of, of it is. So if you ever you want to find the particular color or the code of anything that's on your screen, uh, then that is the way that you do that. <laughs> so uh, the next one along, uh, I'm just laughing at myself because I'm quite sad about these things and I do remember my own hex codes for most of my colors. <laughs> so the next one though is a color palette. Now this is something that I think is really underused. If you're doing lots of different projects where you have different uh, color schemes and things like that, you can actually just create your own palette of uh, colors. So a collection of colors that you're using for something. Uh, so in here, this, uh, this is this one up the top that looks like a series of different palettes <laughs> now there are a few built-in ones so we've got web safe colors uh, then which are the ones uh, apple these are these are the built-in apple ones so developer so these are developer colors for like coding and things like that uh, then we've got also uh, which are other ones we've got apple so some just basic apple colors so some default colors uh, and then which other ones of these are default oh crayons as well that's another one which is just a series of uh uh, crayons in fact let me just jump ahead to crayons because that is a little icon in itself at the top so this one that looks like basically pencils so here you can see we've got a range of different uh, colors uh, and it's very sort of visual isn't it just to be able to pick the one that you want uh, and you can just uh, play around with that and just pick out the one you want so those are the crayons and if I come back to the palettes for a moment uh, that is basically these colors here as well these crayons and they've all got specific names uh, so that is the built-in ones. I think that that's all of them. So we've got Apple, Developer, Crayons, WebSafe Colors, and uh, Test Palette. Ah, uh, oh, that was one that I just <laughs> did another time. Uh, the reason I did this is because I was asked the question by somebody. So I've just sent them a quick video with uh, with this answer. So I just thought I'd make a proper video. And Test Palette is the one that I did for them. <laughs> So uh, uh, this is a bit of be better explanation though, Michael. <laughs> Just uh, for your information, I've gone into a little bit more detail uh, having thought about it. So um, how can you make your own palette? Well, simply you come over to this little dot, these little dots here. And as you can see, I've got a series of other palettes. So I make palettes for most of the things that I uh, do or the main ones that I'm doing. Uh, so if I come over to these three little dots and I'll click on that and I'll click on new, uh, then uh, that will create this sort of blank area here. Now, all it's a case of doing is uh, let's just actually create a palette from that image that I had up. So if I use my color picker and I'm going to pick some, some of these colors, let's say we're going to have red. Uh, and then, so now we've got the red down here and all you do is whatever color is selected down at the bottom here, uh, you can come up to the top and click the little plus icon and it will add it in. So there you can see it's added it in as a color. So let's say that you have a, a series of things. In fact, let me just come in and quickly just grab a few more of these. Uh, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll just grab some from down at the bottom here while we're at it. So maybe you've picked these up from somewhere else. Whoops. 
uh, like this. I'm just going to add a few more random ones in. That one I'll delete. So uh, you can just press the delete button and it will delete them. But you could name these now as well. So if you've got a series of colors and you're using some for, uh, let's say this one is for headings. Uh, this one is for body text uh, in a website. Uh, you can add those in. Personally, these uh, colors don't match at all. They all look quite atrocious together, but there you go. And then let's say this one is like background. It'd be interesting to just design a website now with these colors because it would look horrendous. <laughs> and then this one might be like accent color or something like that. So it just means that you can give them all names. So it means that when you are looking at these palettes, maybe at a later date or something like that, you know exactly which color to use for which. Or if you're designing a website, then you can just come over and pick the one and you know, oh, that's my heading color. That's the accent color or whatever. And then you can apply that also through documents. So if you're making a website and then you're also creating some PDFs or something like that to accompany it, then you're always sticking to the same color profile or color color scheme basically uh, i've just noticed when i add that, added that in it does default to saying unnamed so let's uh, click on these little icons here and i'll click rename i've just realized that's actually sitting off the screen slightly isn't it here we go this is the drop down so that's where you create a new palette uh, and then this is where you click on rename and we can uh, or we can delete it uh, or you can open as well so if you have got these saved you can save them out and send them to people and then they can open them on their side uh, so i'll just click on rename though and then let's call this uh tot vid demo <laughs> so uh, that is now called that in the drop down so if i just put this back where it should be on the screen so now we've got that one in our list as well there it is just there and i can as i say just flip back to any of these so this is a great way to open up uh different uh, different profiles and save your profiles uh so recommend doing that if you're doing any serious amount of work or even if you've just got one thing even if you've just got your youtube channel or whatever it is and you've got a set of colors for them just save them in here and you'll know you've always got them because uh, sometimes if you start adding lots into this one down here it can get uh, a little bit confusing you can see that i need to sort this out i've got three that look very similar there they're ever so slightly different <laughs> those three yellows but uh yeah so it's good to just keep a set consistent in uh, in one place and then you can always get to it uh, next one along the top though is this image one now when you open this one up it will default to this and it says spectrum and here you can just pick out basically any color from the spectrum <laughs> so you can just click around here and get any color but this is also great if uh, if you are doing some work maybe with a designer or a developer or something like that and they've uh, designed you something and they send you through your uh, your color scheme or maybe you have seen someone else or maybe you've been onto the internet and searched for a color scheme or you've gone onto Adobe uh, Colors, is it? I can't remember now. There's a, a uh, an Adobe product. <laughs> I'll forget the exact name for it, but where you get like a palette of colors, uh, then you can actually come onto here and just basically load in an image or you could load in any image. So if you've been out and you've uh, seen something that looks nice, maybe like a billboard poster or something like that, that you think, hey, those colors look good or you've... Uh, whatever it may be just taking a snap of something by the way i've done that before as well I thought hey that that color scheme works really well like in a magazine or something like that take a snap of it well then what you can do is you can come over to this one the one with a picture of an image uh, and then you can just double click on here or single click rather uh, on this and then there is from there new from file so i can uh, go new from file uh, and then i'm just going to come and it just opens up the sort of file opener and I'm going to find a file in here that I've got that I downloaded just as a sample uh, and then add it in so that is basically a, 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 an image of a color palette that I've added in and now basically you can just select whichever one you want from there so uh, that's a great way as well if you do searches on on Google to be honest if you if you search for like color palettes or things like that or maybe red color palette blue color palette whatever you want uh, then you can find that these sorts of things that I've got are you know different mixes of uh, of colors that all work well together and then you can just add it in and then once again you can name this so uh, rename this uh, let's call this red uh, palette it's not really red is it? it's red and yellow and orange but there you go uh, so we've got that and then so here you can save all of your different palettes in the same way that you could before and have a little uh, drop down of them so uh, that is uh, pretty much what i wanted to show you and i hope that that uh, explains a little bit more about how you can use apple's color palette uh, and so if i ever i mention rgb codes in any of my uh, videos in the future then uh, hopefully it should make a little bit more sense now <laughs> so i hope you found that uh, useful and if you've got any other resources for 
colors or things like that. So uh, I will go and find that Adobe one that I mentioned because uh, it's a free service and it allows you to go and actually make uh, uh, colors, palettes that work together and pick contrasting colors and things like that and complementary colors and so on. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that down in the description. But if you've got any other resources for things like this, then uh, don't forget to leave those in the comments for, uh, for my benefit <laughs> and for the benefit of others as well. So if you found this useful, then uh, while you're there, obviously, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you get notified the moment I make a new video. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good feature or a bad feature, to be honest, but uh, I'm not really selling that, am I? Never mind. Uh, that is all for now, but I will leave a link to some more great videos over on the right-hand side. So until the next one, have a wonderful day. Bye.